So the next kit on the bit on the bench is the Italeri Chinook HC.2 stroke CH 47F. So let's take the lid off and uh, have a look at the instructions first and foremost. I actually looked in this box before um, and I've covered the clear plastic nose of the Chinook with some tissue to protect it. And the first thing to do with any instructions is have a good read through them and decide which option you're going to do. Um, I've done that already and uh, decided that I'll be doing the RAF version. That being the case, in the instructions there are options where you can do version A, version B, version C. Uh, go through the instructions and I think actually it's section 6 here where it highlights um, a section which is only for version A. So I've highlighted that on version A and then section 7 is the same uh, this bits here which is only version A so highlight that yeah, just using a highlighter um, and again going through the various stages of the construction highlighting what is version A and what is specifically version A um, doing this and that way, as I go through each stage or each alternative part, I'll know which is the one that I'm actually building without having to refer back all of the time. So the next stage that I'd look at in terms of the kit build is to look at sub-assemblies and break those down and start creating those. So for example, um, the engine halves here um, get those put together there's nothing that goes inside so it's you know you're just putting the two parts together um, and then gradually cleaning them up until I'm happy with them uh, there's a seam mark there and stuff like that just get those together um, they can be curing while the rest of the construction goes ahead the same here with these these are these are part of the engine mounts as well um, the other thing is like the the seats from the cockpit um, get those sub assemblies made put those together and here we have the wall between the passenger compartment if you like and 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 the office so that's the office side and that's the um, flight compartment side um, one of the things that I needed to look at was how accurate this was and if indeed it was accurate um, and that will bring me on to a, something else that I'll talk about in a second. Um, the other thing is to get like sub-assembly so the, the front part of the office here um, I can get all of this sub-assembly done um, before we go any further and things like the seats um, these are all cut off of the main sprue I'll leave them on part of the sprue work out whether or not the sprue attachment here um, are going to interfere with the fit or uh, or would need to be painted in these cases no they won't so the connection in the top half of the sprue there um, we cut that off clean that up these can be painted um, all, all of the all of the seat parts actually including the bum the bum on seat part <laughs> that that can be all of those can be painted prior to assembly uh, the suspension uh, bleh, they're not suspension these are the wheel supports um, at the rear they can be done um, this particular control panel which is in the roof of the, the office if I recall um, th this can all be painted and again it's getting these sorts of things ready um, so that they can be primed and painted prior, prior to any real um, construction of the kit. 
so one of the things that I looked at was whether or not this is actually accurate. Now, to check that out, you need to check references. Um, and I do the best that I can, either go online, source some pictures, and whatever. But a couple of the pictures I found was, was actually that this, these sections here aren't actually open in this way. They are um, covered in the same material that is like a silencing material, I suppose, or padding material. This is the roof section, uh, inside roof, the inner roof section. And as you can see, it's got a sort of quilt lining on it. Um, so, and, and the reference photographs I had um, indicated that that was the case as well with these. There's actually a padded quilted lining over this. So we've got to replicate that. But before we go any further, let's talk about references. And one of the things that I got was this particular book. Um, it's the Haynes Owner's Manual. Um, how we all laugh, you know, if you've, if you've had a car and you, and you need the Owner's Manual, 99 times out of 100, you'll go to the Haynes Manual. Um, let me just move this out a bit and uh, we can get the whole book in, in shot or more in shot. These owner's manuals that Haynes have produced, which I think they were originally produced as a bit of a joke, um, are actually very, very useful. There are some really, really good photographs. I'm old school, I like to have a book. So, for example, one of the things that I was concerned about was the colour of the seat. So we have some, well, you're still getting a bit of glare on this, but we do have a number of good pictures of the Chinooks in action. Here's a great picture um, showing one, the state of the floor inside here, the dirt and the wear, and the other showing the, the sort of colour of these, these seats and these bars and the supporting struts and stuff like that. Now I had considered whether or not to add these seats, the seats in the um, in my Chinook folded up in this manner. Um, now it's a thought. Um, so we'll we'll have a look through the various reference pictures. But anyway, a book like this is is absolutely worth its weight in gold. Um, it's got some really nice pictures good exp explanations of constructions um, for example if you get one on the top with camera it tells you how to build one um, this is another thing that I looked at was areas like this this is the foot pedals uh, within the cockpit and it shows all the detail here um, also there's internal shots of the cockpit which are great um, there's great references um, one of the things to look at on this one um, is the colour. Now the the Italeri kit will have you doing a light sort of ghost grey. Yeah, that isn't ghost grey. Um, the cockpit pictures are, are really quite good. Sorry about the glare. I can't help. The, yeah, but you can see good colour representations there, and it's not it's not ghost grey so there's all sorts of good things in here um if you want to do further detailing but there's good action photographs in there so you get a good idea of what what things look like in the field um highly recommend you get a reference book or some reference photographs so thanks for watching the video so far um the next stage is uh, i'll do a video uh, showing some of the detail work and uh, the early stages of construction. Thanks for watching.